Hi, Sydney. How are you guys? Are you good? Yeah. How about Joel? He's great, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's great, man. I want to make, make him my gay best friend. Because that's a fashion trend now. Where I live in London, a lot of my female friends have a gay best friend. And they're always like, I love having a gay best friend, Dane, because you can talk to him about dicks and sex. And he doesn't judge you or try and slut shame you like guys do, Dane. And he goes shopping and he actually enjoys it. He doesn't just sit there being miserable like you, Dane. So there's this whole trend of all these women kidnapping these gay guys <laughs> and forcing them into friendship. Now, if any of you young ladies are in here, I just want to let you know that they're gay men, they're not handbags, and it's not Pokemon Go, you can't catch them all. <laughs> and, you know, train them up for battle, it's not how it works. <laughs> and I think it's a bit of a double standard because, you know, as a straight guy, I don't get to have a lesbian best friend. I would love a lesbian best friend. <laughs> you know, I feel like I have a lot in common with lesbians. You know, both enjoy the company of women, don't want to share a bed with a man, enjoy the functionality of a short haircut. We have a lot in common. <laughs> you know. But it's not just that, you know, it's just because of the fact that I know that, you know, gay guys are better at being emotional than straight guys, so they say nice things to their female friends to build up their self-esteem with no agenda. They'll say nice things like, Tiffany, Tiffany, stop crying. Tip, look, Tiff, I don't like girls. You've known that since we were kids. But if I did, you would be the first girl that I would marry. And she'd be like, oh my God, Tony, are you serious? I needed to hear that after a tough week, my boyfriend left me and I felt like my body image was so low because I saw the girls on Instagram and I felt so bad myself. <laughs> and that makes me jealous, people in Sydney. Makes me think, Where's my lesbian best friend to reassure me whenever I get nervous or anxious before a gig, you know? <laughs> Say something sweet and uplifting to me before I go on, you know, something nice like, Hey, Dane, I've never sucked a dick before I did! Are you serious, really? Oh. <laughs> so. I'm well aware it's a lot more complicated than that, but, you know. I've always had a, a tough understanding of relationships, you know, even like approaching girls and stuff, because I don't use any of those dick or pussy radars that you call dating apps, because um, that's what they are really, you know. Because I, I remember when I was a teenager, I'd approach a girl in the 90s, and she'd be like, excuse me, I've got a man. I'd be like, okay, fair enough. Then the turn of the century came, and it was more like, excuse me, I don't need a man. Okay, fine, Beyonce, Jesus. You know, now things have changed nowadays, so now it's more like, excuse me, I used to be a man, so, you know, it's, <laughs> things, have, things have definitely changed. Now, someone said, whoa, that's not a transphobic comment. I think it's very courageous if you can make that change. Now, some religious groups think the idea of gender reassignment is ungodly, but I think if you're having an operation which is going to guarantee you're going to get paid 20% less for the same job, that's some real godlike <laughs> shit right there, so... <laughs> And I followed the whole Caitlyn Jenner saga. I thought that was very courageous, because I commend ladies, because I tried to pluck an eyebrow once. It hurt like a motherfucker, so... <laughs> I really appreciate that. But we all know that gender politics is a real hot topic right now. Like, in the States, for example, they're on the cusp of having non-gender Pacific bathrooms, and everyone's like, this is really weird. I don't know how I'm going to adjust. What, like, in your fucking house? Here's a news flash. My sister uses my toilet. She sits like a scaffolder, so. <laughs> I just don't see what the big deal is, man. Like, we're always complaining about overpopulation. Maybe it's a natural way we've evolved to deal with it. Because at the end of the day, we all know tomatoes are fruit, but you never see it in pies. So, you say tomato, I say trans vegetable. That's just how that works. <laughs> you say carrot cake, I say trans dessert, you know. I just feel like if we live in a world where salt and caramel came together to make salt, you know, salt and sugar made salt and caramel, which is like the intersex of the spices, anything's possible. <laughs> so you think about it, salt has always been a savory spice, but very clearly had a dream. <laughs> Turned to the other spices in Iraq one day and was like, yes guys, I know that I'm a savory spice, but on the inside, I've always felt like I'm a sweet spice. You know, why can't I hang out with cinnamon and nutmeg and vanilla essence? And then all the right-wing spices were like, that's ridiculous, okay? We're savory and they're sweet. And never the twain shall meet salt. And then salt was like, why don't you shut the fuck up, curry powder? You don't know my life. <laughs> I 
Now, some of you are thinking, is that the correct accent to use for curry powder? <laughs> I think it is if this has gone on TV, so... <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Stay in touch. I've been Dane Baptiste, I'm in the socials. Thank you very much. Good night. Cheers.